everyone. So, uh, my name is Aris. Today, I want to share about my experience to deploy uh, open stack error clusters uh, in our uh, uh, what we call testbed. Then, uh, originally, I want to give the title from zero to zero, but and then I realized I didn't say anyone. So that's why I decided to change. But of course, uh, I saved my uh, project budget because I uh, didn't uh, pay for any consultation or implementation for this object master. OK, uh, this is me. So basically, I have experience on the, uh, what do you say, uh, ICT engineer and infrastructure professionals, but and then I decide to uh, change my career because in that time it's very difficult to deploy any open source solutions in the enterprise. Okay, so I changed my career into more research, uh, research and then now I'm working uh, on how to push the open source solutions to be used in the uh, research and education sector by okay, building all the labs, test bed, uh, using the open source software and uh, doing the collaborations. So uh, with this idea, I have been uh, spoken to different uh, open source events, uh, on uh, summits for Asia and others, uh, community uh, events. Yeah, and then uh, of course, uh, I'm very happy to uh, able to speak in Infra uh, summit as well. Okay. So uh, disclaimer. So it's, it's more on the personal experience than uh, we say uh, my roles in uh, my current company. So I'm not talking about the, uh, my role in my previous uh, company or my previous institutions. And then it may not be good example of experience uh, since we mostly doing the trial and error, okay, uh, but uh, me or even my colleague, we open for discussions if you have some uh, uh, let me say suggestions or you want to ask uh, something to us. Okay, so, okay, now let's uh, go to the, uh, the, the main uh, sharing for today. Uh, but before we start, actually, uh, I want to have some uh, context why we need this uh, opposite effect uh, ion cluster in our test bed. Because uh, last time we we can consider that we run the, our own private cloud infrastructures, but especially used to be uh, what you say a test bed for cyber security business education, so that you can do. Uh, different security uh, experimentations like hacking, pen testing, cybering, studio OS, or even malware executions. So that's why we, we did some uh, isolated environment so that uh, you can do in any public cloud or even the enterprise uh, infrastructure. Okay. So and then uh, we not big enough to run our own data center, so we just hosted our, uh, what they say, uh, servers, around 200 to 300 servers in, uh, what they say, I can say a limited and protected hosting data centers means that we not easily access this data center because uh, they consider we are something like bad guy. We can do anything so that they need to control even uh, our access, right? So. And then the server is also uh, scattered in different uh, racks that uh, make even uh, difficult for us to, uh, what they say, last time to, to operate this uh, aspect. So in summary, the challenges is, uh, uh, as mentioned in here, in that time we already run some open source perimeter provisioning system, but somehow it's become like proprietary or highly customized because it's coming from some university in the US then the developer came to uh, many different uh, university and then install for, for them and then uh, become it's your own versions of uh, system 
So uh, it creates some prob problematic issue, and some of the solution is not consistent because it's totally uh, what they say uh, uh, independent or a unique solution for your own uh, system. Then, as part of the project uh, deliverables, we must upgrade to the open stack, but. From the user's perspective, right, they want to keep the same UI. Okay, so that's why uh, we do think somehow uh, uh, find a technology that uh, we can use to uh, keep the same UI. Then the other challenge is we need to include some servers that very old. This is more than a ten, uh, sorry, seven years, right? So uh, it's also uh, become a challenge, challenge for us. And the most problem actually, uh, we cannot hire any program service to, to help us to uh, deploy. Okay, so we cannot uh, ask the vendor to do consultations or help us for the deployment or even uh, uh, operating uh, the test plan. Okay, so uh, since I also uh, working on the open source before, I know that this will be some help. Uh, if you want to deploy or if you want to use the open stack, sorry, or, or even open source in general, okay. So, but for the ironics, the the the, the dominance is very good, but somehow is I mean you can say like very long or complex because there are many uh, hardware related uh, uh, documentations that it may work in this hardware, it may not work in other hardware, and then if you see from the online discussions. Sometimes it's very old, and also it's tied to the hardware. So uh, sometimes it's very difficult to whether this solution is work for you or it doesn't work for uh, anybody. Okay, some of the configurations not complete. I think everybody knows. Otherwise, the configuration will be very long. Then, as I mentioned before, we can hire the. I mean, there are several companies actually offer us to do a consultations for deployment, but we cannot. Uh, ask, ask them to do it. Okay, then we also get some help from the uh, other engineers, other uh, partner, but they cannot access to check if we have some problems. Okay. Okay. Then uh, somehow we connect with this. Uh, uh, I mean, like the another testbed is called Camellian Cloud. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if anybody heard before about the Camellian Cloud. Okay. Basically, they do the same thing uh, with us. They run uh, very big clusters of OpenStack Irony. Okay, and uh, the good thing is uh, they have somehow they 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 use the 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 pattern of installation of the OpenStack, but they customize it so that they have a very stable uh, fashion for for themselves. Okay, so that's why we we want to follow them. Okay. So and then we, we contact them and then the good thing is they uh, allow us to uh, have some comments and then even as you can see here uh, they give us a Slack channel so that you can ask uh, almost in real time and so forth and so forth. Yeah. Even uh, uh, some of the team leader ask us whether you have any problem, anything that you can uh, they can help and so on and so on. So so that's why in this opportunity I want to thank uh, them. Uh, to help us to, to deploy this open stack error cluster. Okay, so uh, with the help of, for this team, we make some progress. Even though it's maybe it's not very good because it's very long. Okay, uh, uh, starting because we we, we uh, try before we, we we use these tools. Actually, we, we try with any other tools, but we not really uh, succeed. So. With help of this team and uh, using their uh, customized versions of the OpenStack deployment, somehow we, we make it to run our cluster. Okay, so overall, it will be like one or two years uh, effort to uh, build this uh, cluster. Okay, uh, now I want to share how actually we, we, we solve some of the technical uh, problems or technical challenges. Okay, so as I mentioned, as, as I mentioned before, the installation will be the one of uh, them. So we try with the dev stack. So we know everybody like using the dev stack and it's very good to uh, do the installation, it's very fast. But and then if you are working for the ironic, it's not 
uh, uh, I, I can say not correct, but it's not something that realistic because the VN, uh, sorry, the parameter is truly like converted using the VN. And then uh, we tried also to do the manual one. But, and then after some steps, we found that, oh, this is not very good because the chance of the error very high. Then we try with the Cola and Siebel. Uh, somehow it works, uh, but since we, we do uh, installation many times, we found that uh, there are issues with compatibility and stability because uh, when once you run now, if you run two weeks later or maybe uh, less than one month, uh, you have chance that it will not work because uh, somehow the container image is uh, updated or even the, the the script is updated and so on and so forth. Okay, and then of course if you are using Ubuntu, there is a, a Juju and MS or even the Charm that you can easily deploy. But we found that it's too much for us because you need to deploy many different things. Because like MAS, you need to do the installations of the rec controller, region controller, and so on and so on. And then you need to install another Juju and Charm, and then you still have uh, what they say. Open stack component itself, right? So for us, it's too what they say too complex to handle. Yeah. Then uh, we try the tool is called Kmnet the box. Basically, uh, try to build everything in the single machines, but and then you able to try to provision uh, one of the bare metal machine that attached to this uh, box. Okay, somehow it's, it's it's working fine, but and then we ask them. Uh, to help us to scale this uh, software to install in a cluster form. Okay, of course, uh, since this uh, tools or this uh, software is customized for their testbed, so we found that there are many un uh, additional unused packages. But uh, thanks to their help, we able to remove or solve some of the uh, problem that not related to our uh, packages. Okay. So now uh, the next technical challenge is the integrations. As I, I mentioned before, uh, we want to keep the, the UI, right? So we, we, we have our own, uh, previously we have our own web UI on the front end, and then we have also some back end server. And then we also uh, uh, ongoing to develop some applications to access the, the our uh, uh, test infrastructure. Okay, so basically we, uh, for the user perspective, actually they want to keep uh, the existing platform, so if they don't care about what is actually uh, in the, uh, below of the uh, back end and the front end. Right? So uh, here we, we try to replace this uh, infrastructures or the platform into the uh, OpenStack API that can uh, basically control the, all the uh, hardware resources. Okay. This is something that uh, I want to highlight because we, we try with Cola directly, okay? But you see the, the, the configuration of the Cola and Siebel actually is very long. So I'm just, it's, it must be customizable, right? So you need to know which part of the configuration <coughs> need to be uh, changed or update. But, and then the Chameleon, they already uh, customized the Cola and Simple default configurations to be uh, what they say configuration that can be used to run the Ironic. Then they have additional uh, uh, configurations that uh, uh, what they say that you can slightly little bit change of the configuration. So, so you don't need to configure directly the Cola and Simple. You just need to change the con uh, configuration in the in the Chameleon. Uh, what they say, uh, configurations. Okay, so then uh, technical uh, challenges for the user experience. Basically, uh, they want to have the same UI. Okay, so this is the, our our existing UI. So now we we try to we try to uh, not migrate but align the, the terms right uh, between the, the old system with the new system. So finally, we, we found that okay, uh, experiments mean uh, we can consider in the open stack is become stack, and then the team uh, term we can uh, call it as project. Because 
uh, the idea is very similar. Okay, the team means that you cannot uh, uh, destroy your uh, what they say other team resources, right? So it's totally uh, same as the, the, the what they say the term in OpenStack that every tenant will have their own project name and you cannot uh, what they say destroy the other resource from other project. Then of course all the states uh, detail everything we can easily easily map. Okay. Then uh, this is. Uh, not very important, but it's something that uh, we found is very interesting. That even the old system that we have, they already have some kind of automations, but they are using the uh, uh, program called NS2. Okay, the format of NS2. Basically, is, last time is used for the simulators, but now they extend into the what they say the, the to, to provision the real uh, resources. So then we convert this uh, configuration into the uh, OpenStack heap template. Okay? Uh, the format is different, but the concept is the same because anywhere you want to provision the infrastructures, right? In the cloud, you must define your nodes, what is the image, and what is the network, and sometimes you need to put, uh, fill in some play for or even key, right? Then, uh, as uh, still now, what I understand is that uh, there is no conversion tool for this, uh, what is the, the, the language or the format from the NS2 to, to the heap. So basically it's no problem because we, we can uh, do some very manual of, uh, uh, translations uh, for the same, uh, simple uh, experiments and it's not very, uh, very uh, difficult task. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, after we, we, we did some, uh, what they say, uh, uh, effort to try to solve all the challenges, sorry, the challenges that we uh, discussed before, there are several lessons that actually uh, uh, important for us to, to learn and then maybe you can try to uh, understand and, and, and think whether uh, you can consider with, if you want to uh, build the open state clusters uh, for Ionic, especially. Okay, I think this is the hardest part that we try to solve. Actually, the bare metal networking is not working. Okay, because you need to understand uh, how the virtual user space uh, switch connect to the physical part of the bare metal. Okay, and then uh, if you run the Polar Ansible, which where all the, the services is running on the container, it's more and more uh, even difficult because you, you need to know this container, this port, uh, TCP port, and then how you map to the physical interface and so forth. Okay? So then uh, we found there are many different solutions. I mean, we, I didn't try all of them, but uh, roughly we understand that uh, the first solution, you can create a virtual port for the bridge, and then you uh, physically bridge to the, to the to the, uh, say, to the user space switch, but and then uh, the, it may have some problem if you run any uh, what they say the IP tables or something that you not really understand, right? And then you may also deploy some virtual or physical router, okay? But be mindful of the other features like DHCP relay, the FTP over SDP because by default the ironic will ask you to run the uh, what they say, the TFTP in the same uh, network, right? So if you use the router, so mean there is some additional configuration that, that you need to do. Okay? okay. So uh, then, uh, the another issue is, uh, usually the bare metal have multiple NICs, right? So, and then, uh, they trying to do all the PX input for all the interface, okay? So the problem is, uh, uh, we are wait, while waiting for the uh, need to find the correct NICs that can be used for the, the, the PX eboot, right? The OpenStack will say that, okay, your hardware is already and then just delete all your instance. Okay? So this is one of the challenges. Then, password is not acceptable for bare metal. Okay? I think it's every, everybody know when you 
fill in the uh, when you enroll the node, you need to fill in the IPM IE password in the clear text. But be careful when you want to use the special characters, right? Please put the single quote, okay? Because sometimes the, I mean, it it will yeah it will it will uh, uh, what they say consider as different characters, okay? And then the most important is actually when you configure the IPMI password in the bias. This is more difficult because you must type in. Uh, as far as I know, you're unable to copy and paste. Even though there is a web uh, what they say, interface that you can do, but sometimes the copy paste is not working. Okay? And then, because we, we, we face with some old IPMI, and we found that some old IPMI didn't set specific characters. Okay? This is uh, our observations. And then for the new IPMI, sometimes they, I mean, you need to put some validity of periods. So you need to, to know how long the, the password will be uh, available or, or, or will be uh, configured. Otherwise, don't be surprised. Every day you say that all the, the parameter will go on because the, the password is not valid anymore. Okay? Then the next lesson actually, uh, building the custom image is not easy as uh, use the build image because you know that uh, Ironic have uh, two different uh, image, uh, deploy image and user image. The deploy image is very straightforward. I mean, it's just small, small image that used to, to check all the hardware, everything fine. But the user image will be very difficult because uh, there are different tools that they can, they say can, can, can create the, the, the bare metal image, but some of the tools are outdated or not valid. So better to use the, the official tools that provide by the OpenStack, but uh, the, the, the configuration will be one of the challenges. This is something that working for us, but I'm not sure whether it's also working for you. Okay, the next lesson, uh, this uh, keyword bare metal custom, actually is not customable. When we, we deploy for the first time, we thought that, okay, this is the name, okay? So we can change with any names, okay? But, and then uh, we found when during the, uh, creating the instance, right? Why uh, the, the Nova, uh, conductor cannot like, direct to the ironic conductor. They're always asking for the VMs. Okay, and then we found that okay, this naming is very important. If you want to uh, ask the conductor to to select the, the, the ironic conductor and then prepare on the yeah. So this is very important. And then uh, there is some metadata that you can put in into the uh, flavor or uh, when you when you do it doing the enrollment right, but actually it's not really, uh, uh, what they say, useful. You can put uh, any metadata that actually, actually is totally different with your, your resource uh, uh, that you have in, the, in, in your server, okay? So other things that we also observe, uh, when you want to deploy the user image, there are many different uh, 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 way to deploy, whether it's in ISCASI or you say the direct deploy, and all of them is, totally related with your hardware because like SCSI is actually mounting the, the disk and so on so you need to have the driver of the SCSI and so on then uh, for the parameter cleaning okay so basically as I mentioned before uh, ironic will will before it, uh, use the the users image right they will uh, install the deploy image basically it's doing the cleaning of the surface mean that uh, what they say, try to delete any uh, uh, what they say existing storage uh, that that already provided before, and then uh, try to make sure every uh, the hardware is okay before they can put it to the user image. Okay, so but the problem is if you not really required, just keep it because it take a long time. So I mean. Uh, you will you need to wait 10 minutes or 15 minutes uh, to to make the parameter up, or even if you have some very big hard drive, right? Uh, in my, uh, our example, we have two terabyte, and then never ending actually. So uh, most of the time, the the, the what is it? The instant creation will, will fail because the uh, the hardware is ready. So we just skip, and then uh, within five minutes we we got uh, the instant ironic. Okay, uh, then the last lesson that we learned actually, OpenStack is 
is equal to the database of the cluster is equal to the database cluster. I mean, everything problem if your database is okay means somehow it's okay. But if your database is problem, I think it's very uh, very difficult to to handle. So you need to know uh, which one is become the must uh, sorry the last masters, and then you need to recreate all the uh, what they say uh, database from the, the last save of the database, and then so on and so forth. Okay, so yeah, of course I cannot do it alone. So this is uh, my team member. So somehow we 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 have a, a different skill set for each member. So but unfortunately, uh, all of my member already not uh, with me. Okay, so but uh, I already uh, mentioned to them that yeah, uh, uh, you mean if there's any questions of you, you want to contact them for any. Uh, questions about the ironic or how they deploy the what they say the, the API to talk with any other UI or uh, even other the problem uh, you may uh, contact uh, directly to, to them. Yeah. Okay, uh, this is my slide. My last slide. Uh, thank you for listening.